Hello. Alicia? Yes. Uh, is that how you say your name? Yes. Okay. And you're in uh, Montana? Well, I'm in Connecticut right now, but um, because I'm here with my daughter, but no, I, I was in Montana, yes. Are you stuck in Connecticut? Um, I'm here for family and um, in a way, you know, probably will be here until um, maybe the spring because of COVID. Yeah. My mom's been um, alternating between making COVID masks and taking Xanax. Yeah, oh, that's a nice one. Like that? Look at that. Yeah. Wow, that's fancy. It's fancy. Yeah, she's she's upped her game. She's always been very good at making things, but I think she's been inspired. With, so that's yeah. one, of, one of the pandemic good things. Yeah, I want to make some, but I was about to when I left Montana. Um, you've been asking people to read a poem of theirs or one that they received? One of your own. Oh, okay. Yeah, people, um, not everybody's cool with the idea of uh, having their work out there. And we, okay. we ask that we people don't publish them without their permission, so. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, um, but it wasn't clear, so. How long have you been doing the fest? Well, I... Um, Let's see, I did it once a few years ago and I've either done it twice or three times, but I can't remember. And the first time I did it um, was maybe five years ago. And you have to be part of a secret society that knows the Popo handshake to be able to get in. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> no, seriously, how did you find out about the fest? I was um, online, I think, and I saw it. Um, and I, I had been writing poetry with friends, so I thought it would be fun. And then specifically this year, when I saw it again, I thought I, I need something to do. Um, and then I ended up writing them all at once, you know? I <laughs> what, are you All at once, you sat down and wrote 31 poems? Almost, yeah. And I was anxious to send them. So I asked you in an email if I could send them before August. And you said, yeah, just send them. And I did. I sent most of them very early in the spring. Did, were you um, aided by any stimulants like Benzedrine or something like that? <laughs> I think, no. But what I did was I had a bunch of quotes. And I had a lot of ener pent up energy because you know we had to stop going to the library and doing things with people. and. So it was the pent up energy, I think, that did it. So take us through your marathon writing session. I'm, you know, see, I had the Benzedrine reference because Jack Kerouac with, you know, typing on the road on this scroll of butcher paper that's taped together so he doesn't have to continually load the typewriter with paper. So um, you, you already ruled out uh, stimulants, um, but take us through the process of that whole writing for 2020. Yeah, so I think we went to Michael's and I saw a bunch of postcard size cut out card stock. So I grabbed it all and started painting little pictures on them all. And then looking for quotes and finding a bunch of quotes and writing a quote on um, each postcard. Sometimes they were related to the picture, sometimes not. And then the poems, I would just write them on the postcard immediately. I didn't type them or think about them or pre-write them. And so, yeah, that's how it happened. I would, sometimes they would have related to the quote, sometimes not, sometimes related to the painting. And you've done a lot of painting over the years? Um, just some, but I mean, this was just like messy stuff. Um, just, you know, I was doing some Zentangle stuff as well from the library because, um, like I said, I was looking for stuff to do. And so some of them have Zentangle uh, little drawings that I was learning how to do, which were kind of fun. Remind me what the Zentangle is. Is it kind of like a high class doodling? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> There's going to be more to it than that. <laughs> No, that's what it is. And I mean, may, basically, you know, with COVID, I, I felt so locked up all the time and uh, with things, you know, I was searching for things to do um, because I had come out of the Peace Corps in December 
and uh, was in Mexico for two years, almost two years, a year and seven months. And um, so, you know, going from teaching at a university and being stimulated all the time and having to be in lockdown, um, I had lots of just energy to do lots of stuff. So th I was very thankful for the, this uh, Popo poetry at that time. That was great. Fantastic. I love the um, possibilities of using a quote from which to jump off, from which to vamp. Um, I've used that technique a lot and it's very helpful, I find. And, um, you know, if you kind of get lost, although in, in a 12 line poem, it's hard to do that. But if you get stuck or something, you go back to the quote and sometimes you get an idea of where to go with it. Right, right. Um, how does being involved in the Postcard Fest uh, enhance your own poetry, uh, your own regular poetry composition? Right. Well, I've been writing poetry and I wrote poetry in Mexico and I wrote poetry here in Connecticut um, when I first got here. And I think that what happens is, um, you know, as I have built my craft over the years, the um, I felt like I was making some sort of connection with people. And um, it also would, um, I guess, give me ideas um, to think about later. And I always took pictures of my poems um, so that I could remember. Um, but in a way, it kind of keeps you um, limber. <laughs> in terms of your practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The priming I, pump. Yeah, and I like doing spontaneous stuff a lot. In fact, I was thinking about signing up for your workshop, but I didn't get around to it. I was busy or traveling or something. Um, but I hope you do it again. There was a workshop you offered for $125, I think. Yeah, we did. Um, it was sort of uh, introduction to spontaneous composition, and it ended up being called Poetics as Cosmology. Yeah. That's and so the notion of spontaneity is very much at the root of um, the postcard fest and that workshop and many of the theoretical foundations on which spontaneous composition are based at least post-world war ii era um were, were delved into uh were discussed and um, were offered for discussion sometimes there wasn't much discussion on it but you know how students are right <laughs> yeah i know but anyway if you do it again i hope you take that out there and that spontaneous stuff. And the other thing that's interesting about this poetry is, I don't know if you know about, well, what you were saying, I, I don't know if it relates to the way Dali would get together with his friends and do um, writing corpus. and feeding off each other. Yeah, you know, the exquisite corpse, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so that's a very similar approach. In fact, there's a, there's a variation on the corpse that, um, I did a lot with different part writing partners called Duo Corps. And um, yeah, it's hard to do. I guess I could put everybody in um, Zoom breakout rooms. And there has to be, but it's hard to pass the paper back and forth when you're in right. Missoula or Connecticut or Chicago or wherever. Yeah. Um, what is it about spontaneity that uh, interests you? Well, I don't know. I've always been kind of spontaneous in my writing. Um, but um, I do have kind of a story that's interesting about getting a poem. So I get home and there's someone standing near me and he says, don't go to your mailbox because there's a bear in your yard. And so I didn't go to the mailbox. I sat in my car and then later I went to the mailbox and there was a postcard with a bear, a black bear on it and a little bear. And it was from someone in Florida, just, it, you know. Um, so I don't know, they were, it seems like there were some things that happened like that, that were un unexpected and um, spontaneous poetry are like that as well. You come up with stuff that's unexpected when you're just putting it all out there. Absolutely. Happy. Uh, what did, what did uh, Einstein say about coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, have there been postcards that you get where you're like, 
oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to use that. You steal things, techniques or collage techniques or anything like that. Do you, do you get inspired by them? Well, I, I don't know if I have anything in particular that I've been inspired about, but I, you know, one of my poetry teachers said that good poets steal. And they were right. And the best poets steal so well that you think it's theirs. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are the things that you love about the fest? I just like um, having the reaching out to people who aren't in this country. The first time I did it, I, it seems like I had a lot more people from out of the US. This time everyone was in the US. Um, and I don't know, it inspires new thoughts in me. So I'm thinking about writing to someone in Florida or someone in Hawaii and just the idea of that inspires new images and um, creation, I guess. So I like that a lot about the Poetry Fest. What, what would you fix if you had a magic wand? Maybe I would do more of this uh, during COVID <laughs> instead of begin in August. Yeah, you know, we got a little bit of flack for moving it up a um, little bit. And uh, somebody was afraid that uh, someone was going to get sick from a postcard. Oh, dear. Yeah. And uh, I suppose if you coughed into it and they were lived across town and got it within 48 hours, there's a chance of that. But I, I didn't hear of any postcard infections. Um, no. And the research shows that... Um, it doesn't really stick on things for very long. So they could get a postcard and maybe leave it somewhere for three days and then pick it up if they want. Yeah, it's, um, hmm. what can I say? Uh, I, I would like to have that sign that I saw at a bar one year. If you have a complaint, uh, the, the person who's in charge of complaints is Helen Waite. Do you know that sign? <laughs> so if you have a complaint, go, go to Helen Waite. Is, is, is the joke, but I, I've never implemented that. Um, what about a poem of your own to read? Yeah, I did uh, some of the poems actually that I sent. I thought we were reading poems that we sent. So that's what I have to read here. Um, yes, that's the idea. Right, it is, okay. Because I wasn't sure if, they, if you're asking for a poem that I mailed or if you want just any poem. So well, yeah, so well, this you know, I mean, a poem from the fest that you know illustrates yeah. your use of the the form. I guess is what we're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a few here. I didn't really pre-read them. I'll, I'll try this one. So it's called Galaxy Affair. Someone's star lives in another galaxy. She grows an herbal garden near the back door, under a tree with purple bananas. She gathers greens, tosses them into the air, designs a tea party on Zoom, not in a room, just in midair, creates a mini fair in our air. In the, in the category, the burgeoning category of Zoom poet, poetry. Yep. <laughs> you look like you want to read another one. No, not really. I mean, I just have some here, but um, I, what, the way I took the picture of them was in groups of three. So when I pulled this one up, I was thinking, which one am I gonna read today? Because I didn't take time to, to preview anything, so. If someone um, were to see an ad or see it flash across their screen that Popo is happening in this August Poetry Postcard Fest and uh, they asked you, what do you think about it? You're a participant, what do you think about it? What would you tell that person, that, that um, uninitiated potential popo participant? Right. Um, I would tell them that it's a great project um, to go ahead and try it, um, that, that it's a wonderful way to connect with people. Um, and I actually tried to talk some people into it. Um, and, you know, I, I did get one person who said, well, I have so much to do and I'm too, you know, it would drive me nuts. I don't know why. Um, but, but otherwise, I mean, that's what I would tell them, um, that it's a great way to connect with others. 
And you know, with other groups, they connect through Facebook and those kinds of things, um, but I don't think that's necessary. Um, I think that if for anyone who wants to do poetry or has been doing poetry, it's just a great way, as I mentioned before, to um, be spontaneous, practice, create, and connect. Thank you for taking Facebook out of the picture for us. <laughs> I don't have it now. I have Instagram, but. Yeah, and maybe Joe Biden will force them to divest. Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen, but, um, but I like the fact that, you know, you write to someone, you get that creativity out, you get some creativity back. And I had a lot of people write because I think some of my poems that I sent out were in the midst of depression from COVID, you know, kind of being down, being stuck. Um, and I would get poets writing to me, you know, um, I love this one um, po postcard that I got and had kind of a Bambi on the front and it said, uh, focus on the positive. <laughs> So I really like that. And then other than that, there were some very good uh, poems that were inspiring to be more positive, to look at the good. So I enjoyed that. Therapeutic popo. <laughs> <laughs> popo is therapy. Well, um, it's so great to meet folks where I'll see the name and I'll try and make some connection and and then uh, we have this experience and it's a really beautiful thing for me. I'm very grateful that you signed up and took the time to um, figure out what poem you wanted to read and, um, and that you're part of this community. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, and thanks for the, the cost, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs>